Warning. This video is for educational purposes only. It is intended to show the techniques of drying gases. However, the chlorine gas that is dried is extremely dangerous and could cause death if misused. The product created is also very dangerous as it reacts with moisture in the air to form poisonous gases, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen chloride, and some hydrogen sulfide. This experiment is not intended to be repeated by anyone. Hello YouTube. In this video we'll be making sulfur monochloride and showing techniques for drying gases. I chose to use this experiment to show these techniques despite their dangers because you can actually see the chlorine gas is reacting with the sulfur. These drying techniques will be used in many upcoming videos. To begin, I started with 50 grams of elemental sulfur, as you can see here. I'm also using 300 milliliters of dichloromethane. I place both of these aside for now as I'll be adding them to a flask later. In my fume hood I first place a sturdy stand. Then I place a cork ring on top of the stand. On top of that I place a 1 liter round bottom flask half full of calcium hypochloride. Next I place a straight vacuum takeoff adapter. Connected to that is an addition funnel full of hydrochloric acid, the pool variety. You'll notice that I'm not using a pressure equalizing funnel, and this is because I don't have one. Well, to be honest, I broke it, and I haven't replaced it yet. If I did have one, I would use it here. Next, I place another stand, and on that I clamp a gas drying column. Here's how I made the gas drying column. I bought this gas washing bottle for about $2 on eBay. However, you can build the same thing with a graduated cylinder, a rubber stopper with two holes, and some glass rod. Just copy how this one is built, replacing the plastic tubing with glass rod. Place a longer tube in the cylinder and start pouring a drying agent inside. I'm using damp red, which is just calcium chloride. Filter you reach the top of the tube. Then place the top on, connecting the long tube to the inlet. If you're using glass rod, just push it all the way through the rubber stopper. The short tube is the gas outlet. As gas enters the bottom of the column, it will be forced through all the drying agent and then through the outlet. Any water will be captured in the drying agent. So you should have dry gas exiting the outlet. Now that we have that done, I can continue to build the rest of my apparatus. I connected the tube that goes from the gas generator to the drying column. Now I place a third stand. And on top of that I place a magnetic stirrer. Then a glass bowl to hold the ice to keep the reaction under control. Now I place a 1 liter 2 neck round bottom flask in the bowl. And in the left neck I place a rubber stopper with a glass rod that will be feeding the gas to the my reaction. Making this is very simple. You will need a rubber stopper, a glass rod, and some optional glass wool. Place the glass rod in the rubber stopper. Then place the glass wool in the tip of the glass rod. This will help the gas to diffuse as it exits the tube. Once it's attached, I place the rubber tubing from the drying column to the glass rod. Now I place a reflux condenser in the other neck of my flask and connect all the tubing to feed it with cold water. On top of the condenser, I place a drying tube to keep any moisture from entering into the reflux condenser or my reaction flask. Here's how you can pack a drying tube. Take some glass wool. You can also use cotton in most cases, and using a glass rod, place them in the bowl part of the tube. I usually stuff a little in the smaller tube to help hold it in place. You don't have to use a lot. In fact, too much can cause problems. Next, fill the tube with whatever drying agent you plan to use. In this case, I'm using calcium chloride. Don't fill it up all the way, because you'll need room to add another wad of glass wool or cotton, and then a rubber stopper to hold everything in place. These glass drying tubes can also be used to dry small amounts of gas in place of a drying column. However, for large amounts, they can get saturated with water and become useless. After adding the drying tube, I then added a rubber hose that connects to the drying tube and a glass rod. The glass rod is placed in a solution of water and sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide will be used to react with any chlorine that happens to come out of the condenser. Now that everything is set up, I can begin to add the 300 milliliters of dichloromethane to the flask 
and add the sulfur and a magnetic stir bar. I begin the reaction by starting the chlorine generator and starting the magnetic stir. The gas generator will produce the chlorine gas and push it through the drying column and then into the reaction flask, which is now surrounded by ice. The reaction is very exothermic, so the reflux condenser will keep any dichloromethane from escaping. The dichloromethane is just a solvent and does not react with the sulfur or the final product. It will react in some small amount with the chlorine to form chloroform, but that's only a very small amount. The reaction begins as a yellow slurry of sulfur, but after several hours of chlorinating, it will change to a clear deep red color of sulfur monochloride. In fact, I know the reaction is done when the solution becomes clear. After it was finished, I took what had been made and then set up the gravity filter. This is to remove any solids that might have formed. The final product can't easily be stored as it decomposes to sulfur dichloride, a clear yellow liquid, releasing chlorine gas that would build pressure if stored in a sealed container. However, as time passes and it's all converted to sulfur dichloride, I can then store it. Sulfur dichloride was my reason for making this because it has an interesting property to dissolve sulfur. I hope you'll find these drying techniques helpful. I originally planned to show these techniques by making sodium hypochloride, which is a much more useful compound, but not at all interesting to watch being made. Anyways, thanks for your time, and I'll see you soon in my next video.